how to host your website with infinity free for free hello everyone welcome back to another video i hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing and absolutely incredible day in this video i'm going to be showing you how you're going to make web hosting with impressive unlimited disk space domain hosting and a lot of other things okay and for that we're going to be using an incredible software called infinity free and in this you're going to need to only have an account and you're going to have a cloud server on which you can absolutely host anything from websites to domains to a lot of other things as well. You can have your very own cloud. It could be WordPress hosting, WooCommerce hosting, and a whole lot of other things. And this is great for small businesses, entrepreneurs, or even a solopreneur because it is a free website hosting for over 10 years for completely free. And Infinity Free is completely free, no credit card required, and there's no hidden fees, okay? So basically, all you're going to do is you're going to come over to infinityfree.com, okay? So once you're at infinityfree.com, from here on out, what you are going to be doing is you are going to be signing up. So for that, you're going to click on register now. And once you click on register now, it's going to ask you for an email and a password. So I'm going to do exactly that by entering my email password. So once we have entered our email and password, from there on out, what's going to happen is we're going to ask it to take us forward into the setup process. And as it does that, you are going to see that there are a lot of other things that you can work with. So once you're fully set it up with your account and everything and you confirm your email, you're going to come to a place like this and this is going to be your basic dashboard. OK, and uh, this is where a lot of your things are going to happen. This is where you're going to add different accounts and a whole lot of more things okay so it's obviously up to you to work around things over here so obviously first of all you can see hosting accounts and under hosting accounts it says create account so obviously you're going to go ahead and click on create account over here and once you click on create account it brings you to a few steps so step one is to choose a domain name. And first of all, you're going to choose a domain type. So first of all, it could be a subdomain or a custom domain. A custom domain is something that is totally yours, uh, but uh, you're going to already need to have a domain for that. OK, uh, when it comes to subdomain, that one is obviously provided by our people at uh, Infinity Free. So subdomain, obviously, you're going to write anything random. So John dot I'm just going to call it that. Then you're going to make a domain extension. Let's say I want to go with um, .42.web.io. And once I do that, I'm going to check its availability. And once we check its availability from there on out, it says that the format is not correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to call it John. OK, and once you call it John, you're going to check the availability and it says it's already on use, so I'm just going to add some random gibberish so I can finally get it. And if this domain is available, as you can see, it brings you over here. So add additional information. So there's account username, there's account label, and then there's account password. So I'm going to generate random, okay? If you leave it empty and click on create account, it's going to keep it totally random. And that is what I would prefer, to be honest. Now it says your account has been created. Here are some things you need to know. It will take a few minutes for your account to be set up, but you can log in to the control panel already. It can take up to 72 hours for the new domain to be visible everywhere due to DNS caching. Please log into the control panel once to enable all the features and a whole lot more. So obviously we're going to go over to the control panel. Uh, and once we are redirected, it brings us here. So. Uh, to notify if your changes to your service, etc., etc., please click I approve. Now, trust me, this isn't any scam or anything. Uh, this is a proper approval. I know it looked pretty shady, but uh, it's a proper approval page for your control panel. And once you approve that, basically, now you're going to be redirected into your hostings, uh, you know, you could say main working page. Now, over here, there's a lot of different things you can work with. So over here, you can see update account contact, uh, you have getting started, account upgrades, account settings, etc. Then down in files, you have a lot of things. Uh, then you have FTP backup accounts and database options. And there will be, you know, SQL databases, my remote SQLs. Moving down, you have a lot of more things to work with. 
So the thing is, this is your infinity page, you know, infinity free uh, provides this page so you can get uh, an overall general feature, you could say summary. Okay, and it's a pretty helpful page because the number of features it had on it is pretty crazy. So moving on, let's say I'm going to go with uh, a certain feature. So we're going to go on files and we're going to go on online files manager. And what that will do is it will open up this, uh, you know, you could say file cloud in a way where it's created a few files regarding our domain. So here you have all these different files. So let's say I'm going to go on HT docs and over here you have these two things. So you have index HTML and you have files for your website that should be uploaded. So we're going to go on index HTML and it gives you all these options. You know, you can download it, create zip archive and stuff. So you can see that these things are highly accessible and you can highly work around with them. Then comes your database. Okay. And my SQL databases is a very great place. And database is the place where you add in all the data and put it on your web host. So in the new database option, you can uh, search different operations. So let's say I'm going to go with new operation. Okay. And once you go with new operation, you're just going to click on create database. And once you click on create database, it creates these current databases. As we can see in the current databases, we have this one over here. So you can just click on admin and uh, this basically takes you to the admin section of this database. And you can obviously work around with the, uh, because you know, you've been given access to the admin. So you can work around with the admin as well to, you know, obviously establish a different database structure for yourself. Now it might take a few minutes to load in for you, depending on your internet speed, because it's a whole database, you could say template loading up. So that will generally take a longer time than usual. Now, basically you're going to go ahead and click on create table and to create table, you can uh, start working around with different things for yourself. Okay. Because creating a table is obviously not the easiest thing. And once you're in structure, let's say I want to create a table called my data. Once I call it that, you're going to add a number of columns. I'm going to, I'm going to keep the columns at one and I'm going to click on create table. I'm going to make sure that my data is all properly there. And here you can see it starts making this stuff up. So down here you have names and stuff. So you know what? Let's add more columns. Why don't we, you know, why not? And if you do that, as you can see, it's going to add more columns for us. And in these columns, you can add different, you know, lengths of data for yourselves. So obviously, first of all, you're going to choose the data type. You know, it could be an integer data type, which is int. It could be a big integer, decimal, float, etc. Add your names, your data type, your length or values, their default values, collations, attributes, and a whole lot more with different table comments, partition definitions, and all these other things. Okay. Now these things obviously are pretty, uh, you could say helpful and useful for yourself because these make different data scripts in the back end of the process that are going to be really helpful for you in the future on. So yeah, that is how you're going to host your own website with infinity free using its old, you know, database and all those things. Now I know it, this video looked pretty complicated and pretty complex, but trust me, all the processes that I took you over with, those are how you're going to, you know, basically host your own website and the database that I made you select and put in, you can add the username or name of that database into any software or website. So let's say there's, um, you know, WordPress or something like that. You can put in a plugin and add your website address over there and things should work far, fine from there. So that is how you're going to host your very own website on infinity free in the easiest way possible. So thank you for watching till the end and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.